Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today we're looking at the Beretta PX4 Storm. This pistol has been Beretta's most modernized pistol. Uh, it's also their first time going with a polymer uh, polymer frame. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of interesting lineage that goes into this because what's very unique about this is the type of barrel that it uses. The locking system on here is a rotating barrel. Now that rotating barrel has been used in the past and that story is rather interesting. So I think uh, before we get into the details of the PX4, we're going to get into the uh, lineage of that uh, rotating barrel locking system. Back around 1999-98 time period, uh, Gene Stoner and Reed Knight uh, at Knight's Armament uh, developed the system, this rotating barrel. And Knights at the time was not really interested in manufacturing pistols. So they got with Colt Defense. The Colt, well, at that time it was probably Colt's, uh, Colt Industries. And Colt was to produce that, and if you've ever heard of the Colt Model 2000 All-American, that was the first pistol that was man it was manufactured utilizing this system. Now, that was Colt's first attempt in many, many years at making a pistol that was designed for use by law enforcement, because prior to that, you know, all Colt had was 1911s, and 1911s are not viable law enforcement weapons. They have not been for a really, really long time. At least uh, prior to 1985, prior to the adoption of the M9, when you had your first, you know, if you want to call them Wonder Nines. Uh, the All-American was made a couple different ways. You had a polymer frame, uh, which was their first time ever messing with a polymer frame pistol. Uh, and they also had a, uh, you know, a steel frame, aluminum frame. Well, it didn't go too well, because uh, once Colt Lawyers got involved with it, the trigger turned out to be that of a staple gun. Uh, it was a horrible trigger, very much reminiscent of the, of the uh, VP7. The pistol failed horribly. At that same time, Colt was putting in an entry for the Offensive Handgun Weapon System, or what we now know as the Mark 23. Uh, they submitted an entry into that program where it was sort of a hybrid Colt 1911, uh, Double Eagle, and All-American 2000. It did utilize the rotating barrel. And unfortunately, that was also a disaster. It was a disaster in a couple ways. Uh, first and foremost, you had some issues with the frame cracking and uh, the, the cam path. The other thing, thing there was was the, uh, the offensive handgun weapon system was supposed to utilize a sound suppressor. With a rotating barrel, you are not going to attach a can to a rotating barrel. So they came up with a mechanism which clamped down to the front to the rail, it came up over, and you attached the suppressor right to there, which was not nearly as effective as the sound suppressors what HK had to offer. So, unfortunately, both attempts that Colt made at utilizing this system, which is an excellent system, you know, failed miserably. <laughs> One of the byproducts of this failure by Colt was Colt could not pay Reed Knight and Gene Stoner uh, for the obligation that they had. So Reed Knight was able to go into Colt's vault and for pennies on a dollar, get all of Colt's archive guns, which is what you see in Reed's museum at this point. So that was how Reed Knight got all of those guns in his museum, all those old Colt guns. Uh, that was what was used to pay for the, well, the failure of the uh, rotating barrel program. So now we're going to skip forward a little bit. In 1999, a new pistol appeared from Beretta. It was called the Beretta Cougar. And what this was was a pistol that was designed to be smaller, which did utilize a rotating barrel mechanism. Uh, the gun was designed to have, be a, a smaller, more compact version that would be an alternative to the 92-96 series pistol. Now, the interesting thing was is Beretta was able to get that system to work and work well. Uh, one of the really nice benefits of having that system is because it's rotating and coming back at you and it's not dropping down, when you have your recoil, you don't get as much of this. You get more of this. Much so like the 92 series because you have the, you know, the dropping locking block, which also gives you more of a push than a snap, which made the recoil of this type of a pistol very, very, very nice. Now, the Colt 8000 was offered in 940, 45, uh, 37 SIG. It was offered in all, all the different calibers. And the way the slide was on it, it was very similar to that of the 92 series, where it had the same features for as far as the safety was concerned. You had the F, which was the double single decock. You had the G, which was the decock only. And then you also had the, the, the double action only with no safety. So you were able to have all those different configurations as well uh, in, the, in the 8000 Cougar. Now, there was two other calibers that the, the Cougar was offered and available for European customers, and that was the 41 Action Express and the 9x21. Uh, those are never available here in the United States. The 8000 did have a aluminum frame similar to that of the 92 series, and it also had a, a rail on the front as well for attaching a flashlight. There was a law enforcement following for the 8000 Cougar. In fact, where I come from in Rochester, New York, uh, our police department there, Rochester Police Department, switched from the 92 series, which they had had for a very long time. They were one of the first police departments in the country to get the 92 series. They switched over to 45. 
uh, and they went with the, the Breda Cougar 45. Oddly enough, the pistol that they really wanted was the HK-45 USP. Uh, unfortunately, the cost was so high that it was just not going to happen. Uh, so the, the guys at the firearms training unit, uh, they decided to go with the Cougar, which was not a bad idea because for a couple of reasons. One, it had the exact same safety as the 92 series. So you had your guys who were already familiar with the 92 series. They were used to the way the, the pistol decocked. They were used to the controls on it. And Rochester was really not going to put a lot of money into the transitional training for the pistols that would be necessary for a whole new system anyways. So it definitely had a lot to do with speeding up transitional training. It was an easy switch over uh, to the gun. The gun served rather well. Uh, some of the issues that they had with it were magazines that were, that were rusting. Um, you know, it was it was not as durable of a gun as some of the more, you know, the, you know, the Glocks and so forth. Beretta had eventually gone on to discontinue uh, the the Cougar series with the adoption of the PX4, but the gun never went out of production. It was done by a sister company uh, called Stoger Arms. Well, we go back to the Rochester Police Department. Uh, they were starting to look around the 2006, 2007 time period to replace the aging uh, Cougars. Uh, there were two pistols that were being looked at. One was the new Beretta PX4, and one was the Smith & Wesson M&P. Well, there was a couple different camps that were involved in that. You had one guy in the fire training unit who really liked the Beretta, and one guy who really liked this, the M&P. Now, there was an issue that was previous as well. It was transitional training. Was the city going to put up enough money to do a proper transition? Because, of course, when you go from a you know, your manual safety 92 series, Cougar series, now to a, a striker fire pistol as the M&P, that's going to take a significant amount of money in transitional training and also a lot of money in ammunition in that transitional training. The, the head guy who was in charge at the time of the firearms training was not willing to take that risk. He looked at the PX4, of course, in 45, and he found a pistol that was very similar to what they had had, that uh, it was another pistol that the police department would be able to switch over to with the same kind of safety, the same features it had prior to that, which would, again, lower cost in, uh, in the transitional training and so forth. And uh, they went ahead and they adopted the PX4 and 45. So the pistol has done quite well. The PX4 has definitely brought it into the polymer age. Now, taking a look at this pistol, this particular one here is the 9mm. Again, we had all those different calibers as well, 9mm, 40, 45. First thing we're going to take a look at is uh, some of the frame. Again, we have a polymer frame, and we have a rounded trigger guard. Now, that rounded trigger guard uh, is a little bit easier for carrying concealed. doesn't snag nearly as much. We do have a much easier method of disassembly, which we're going to show you in a little bit. Uh, but we'll go over that. This is ambidextrous. Now, like the 92-96 series, as we said, we have a direct barrel-to-chamber feed. Now, one of the things that made the Beretta 92 series as reliable as it was was you had a direct feed right from the from the barrel right into the chamber. There was no ramp that was needed. That was the same thing here. So you basically eliminate any kind of a feed jam. Um, I've got a lot of rounds, especially to the 45 version, and I have never had a failure to feed with it, even with uh, some of the more uh, nasty hollow points that have more of a truncated uh, design to them. And another aspect that you have by having the direct chamber to feed is you're able to have a fully supported chamber, which many automatic pistols do not have because of the ramp which is also makes it more reliable and more durable, especially with higher pressure loads. The rifling is a 6R rifling. Now, this goes very well with the type of operating mechanism that we have. Like any Beretta, you would have you have a chrome-lined uh, barrel, which is something that Beretta has put on all of their guns. Uh, it's, it's a mil military standard, but it's also a, a reliability enhancement. Now, what's important about this is the way the barrel rotates. When the barrel rotates on this, the torque uh, goes counterclockwise. Uh, which is harnessed by the locking system to reduce the amount of pressure uh, needed to unlock the system. So it's utilizing some of that torque to unlock the system, which also aids in your in your lower recoil uh, than you have on a lot of pistols as well. Uh, it's, it's a very nice feeling that when a pistol fires due to that. Now the ease of disassembly. We're going to show you how this thing disassembles. It's very, very simple. It's much more simple than the 9296 series. Of course, you're making sure this is empty. We're going to remove the magazine. Now, the magazine is 17 rounds, so you have, uh, you know, 17 rounds as opposed to the 15 rounds with the uh, 92 series. So, we, you know, we're making sure that it's empty. Now, there's a little T-handle. It's located on both sides. We're going to pull that down, and we're going to slide the, the slide right off the frame. We pull rearward, and what we have here is the locking block, which has the post, and the barrel... As you can see, has a cam track. That post sits in that cam track, and that's what utilizes it to lock 
and to unlock as you can see how that's working. So we have lock, we have unlock. As you can see, when we go into the uh, unlock position, you can see that the, the bottom cham chamber there, there's no ramp and it uh, is fully supported. You can actually visu visually see that. You have a captive recoil spring. Now, when you look at the slide, the slide comes apart very much uh, identical to that of a 92 series. And of course, you have the very important frame pin safety in there, uh, which prevents it from discharging unless the trigger is pulled all the way to the rear. And the safety works the same way as you uh, engage the safety. The frame pin is covered, not only physically covered, but it's also locked into place. This particular one happens to be an F series where you have the, uh, the decock double and single action. And looking at the frame here, you'll see the polymer frame, very, very durable. And the whole trigger mechanism back here comes out as a module, uh, similar to that of the, the Tucker uh, pistol. But we have here the, uh, the decocker, we have the ejector, and we also have here the lever that's used for the firing pin safety. As you can see, very, very simple. So we do have a removable modular backstrap for reassembly. The locking mechanism block here is also idiot proof. You can only insert it one way, small hole in the front, large in the bottom. So you insert. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop the barrel in place. We're going to put it into the lock position, as you can see. Post down, insert into the frame. And the post will directly engage that cam track. Drop it right down. There you go. We're going to do a quick demonstration of how the safety works on this. Again, we have a, the decock with the manual safety engaged. The, the hammer can't move. We flip up. Our first shot is the long drawn double action pull. Then from there, it fires. Then you go to single action. Then we decock. So we have ambidextrous for as far as the safety is concerned. The magazine release is also reversible to the other side. The only thing that you don't have ambidextrous is your, uh, your slide release. But if you're trained to slingshot, it doesn't make much of a difference. Another difference that you're going to see on here, and this actually came from the Rochester Police Department. I can give you a story on that. If you look at the safety on here, you'll see how that bevels out. When uh, the Rochester Police Department first looked at the PX4 and 45, they did not like the fact that the safety was so narrow. Uh, they had a hard time gripping it with their hands, especially with gloves. So they requested Brenda design for them a wider safety, which enabled them to get a better grip with gloves and without gloves, which is pretty much what you're seeing right here. So this is much easier to get a hold of. So when you do have to slingshot it, it doesn't, it doesn't engage like the 92 series does. Looking at the sights, you have a three-dot sight system. The rear sights are the Super Luminova sights. Nice Italian name. Basically what it is is similar to what H&K has, which is a luminescent, luminescent paint. Where when you pull the pistol out of your holster, you take your tactical light, quick hit on the front and rear sight, and now you have bright uh, night sights. Now these are also available with Tritium night sights as well, which most police departments never buy them. They wouldn't use a Luminova, they would use a Tritium night sights anyways. But this was a nice and expensive uh, option uh, to Tritium night sights. Now, we're going to give you the specifications for this particular pistol. This particular pistol is the 9mm. You're looking at a 4-inch barrel, completed barrel, a height of 5.51 inches, the length 7.55 inches, width is 1.42 inches, the weight is a light 27.7 ounces. Now, the finish you have on here is also the mil-spec or battle-proven Bruneton finish that Beretta uses. Very, very durable, very, very reliable finish. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take this out to the range. We're going to see how it shoots. Uh, very, very impressed with the PX4 and 9mm. Again, I got a lot of trigger time on the 45. Uh, the 45 that I had had probably had seen close to three, 4,000 rounds. Uh, most of it was 230 grain ball. 
Uh, so I was expecting no less from the PX4 9 millimeter. The way you have the direct magazine to chamber feed, you know, it pretty much eliminates the possibility of any kind of a feeding type malfunction. And we experience no uh, failures to extract, eject of any sort. Uh, ammunition we used, we used uh, the SIG 124 grain full metal jacket. I used the Black Hills 115 grain full metal jacket. I did use some of the SIG uh, V Crown hollow points uh, as well as some of the HSTs uh, just to see, you know, for reliability. No problem whatsoever. We only had the one magazine. Accuracy was very, very impressive. You know, uh, I'm starting to get away from really worrying about group size because these are tactical pistols. They are designed for, for combat use. Uh, not to punch holes, uh, you know, you know, put bullets through both of the same hole. You know, uh, we shot at 15 yards, and the groups were excellent. Uh, you'll, you saw a photograph of uh, one of the targets. Uh, it's an excellent combat pistol. It's comfortable. I do like the recoil because I'm, I like the 92 series recoil where you do get that, that push instead of that snap. And with the rotating barrel on this, it, it gives you that same kind of a push uh, rather than the snap. And it's amazing that, uh, you know, Colt had the opportunity, uh, you know, all those years ago uh, with this, this system, and they could not make it work. Uh, they had they had issues, with again, with the trigger. They had issues with uh, durability. Uh, Beretta was able to take that very similar system and make it work. And it's a very viable combat pistol. In fact, the 45 version of this, uh, they had had ready for a, a 45 caliber replacement program for the U.S. government, which was unfortunately canceled. Uh, back then, they, they they decided not to go with it, but there was a requirement out for a suitable 45 caliber handgun. They had a tactical version that had the, that was all set up for a suppressor. It had the you know, the high the high profile sights and so forth. This is offered in three different configurations. You'll see a full size. You have a compact and a subcompact. The uh, subcompact version of the PX4 is on par with the size of a Glock 26, so it's 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 quite small. And there's one more thing I'd like to mention. There is one additional trigger option that this one has that none of the other ones do. It's called the C. The, the C trigger configuration gives you a single action only uh, capability. It does have a, a quarter cock. There is no manual safety or decock on the pistol. It is just um, the, the constant single action trigger pull. Uh, it's not very common. Uh, so that's sort of why I forgot at the beginning of the video. But it is an option that's out there. Uh, the most popular version of this one is like the 92 is the, is the F version with the double single with the decocker. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share, and consider being Patreon supporters. Thank you.